<coughs> oh my god, I just want to fly. Today we're on the South Australian South Coast and we are fishing what is debatably one of Australia's greatest salmon fishing beaches. Locks Wells in South Australia. So we haven't even got to the beach yet and we've already seen the sign, danger, no swimming, no surfing, and I've just spotted a shark in the surf. This should be very interesting. <laughs> Oh boy, I was like the third cast. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's supposed to be one of the best salmon beaches in the country. Oh, is he still on? I think he's swimming towards me, I'm not sure. Oh, he, I might have turned him. He might be running towards the beach. He's not fighting like he was though. Oh no, he's still there, he's still there. Oh. <laughs> Still there. Oh, I think I'm getting him coming in on some of these waves. I feel like I'm losing him, but geez, he belted it at first. Oh, come on. No, there it is. Big salmon. Big salmon. Oh. Oh, look at that! Oh, that is a good fish. Woo! Look at that! <laughs> Woo! That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, look at that. Woo! Alright. You've asked for it. There he is. There's dinner. Dinner's sorted. I'm just bleeding him out because the kids love to have these fish as sushi and sashimi and they have been begging me to get one for the whole trip. And this one is a couple of good sushi and sashimi meals. Wow. He's gonna put him head down so he bleeds. Out. I just want to take a break from fishing for a minute to tell you the type of gear I'm using and sort of what we're working with today. I've got a nine foot rod. It's a five to seven kilo rod. It's probably a bit light for this situation. I would really like something a bit heavier. I've got a 3,000 size reel with 10 pound braid and 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. That's really too light for the type of fish that we're getting today. Uh, I've been running the thing at absolutely crank down max drag just to be able to bring those fish in. I would prefer to be using a 4,000 size reel with 20, 25 pound braid and probably a 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, the fish that they can get down here are twice the size of what I've been getting today. And if we get a big one with this big surf, we're probably not gonna get them in. Now the lures I'm working with, uh, basically everything I've caught today is on a lure, it's called a bluefish by Jiggle. 
Uh, it's just a little sort of silver minnow imitation. It weighs 28 grams. It's got a treble hook at the end. It's it really, to be honest, doesn't look like much of anything, but I have caught so many fish on this lure. It just keeps catching and catching and catching. I literally, I've probably caught thousands of fish on these lures over the years. And even once they get beat up and the paint's gone, they still seem to catch fish. Uh, I'll put a link to these lures in the description down below. They come in a little three pack and they are one of my go-to lures for Australian salmon. The other one I've got with me today, although it's not the right conditions for it, is the little salmon dart. It is a 14 gram, just a little 14 gram minnow imitation. And if the water's a bit calmer, if it isn't such big seas, I'll be using this. It still casts like a bullet, casts a mile, and I've caught just about every species you can catch around the world on these. I keep all of this stuff in just this little sort of uh, bum bag type thing, which I keep a little set of pliers, and then I keep just this uh, little set of uh, lip grips with me. I just strap that on my waist, and, and all I do is I just walk the beach and I cast and I cast and I work and I cast until I find the fish. Once I find the fish, I just keep casting that same spot until they move, and then I'll move up or down the beach to try to find where they are. And particularly with lure fishing and, and fishing this really light style where you can walk up and down the beach, it's just a huge advantage over bait fishing or just staying in one spot where you're waiting for the fish to come to you. I'll often find when I'm fishing with the lures, I'll only have to go maybe 15, 20 meters or 50 meters and, and I'll find the fish. Where with your bait fishing and you've got the rods in the sand, there's a lot of work in moving up and down the beach. But fishing light like this, you just got the sand between your toes, you got the water lapping up at your ankles. It's just an absolutely beautiful way to fish and you can just move up and down the uh, beach and be super mobile until you find the fish and, and then you're on. I'll leave links to the gear I'm using just in the description down below. And if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'm always happy to answer any fishing related questions. I mean, that's what this channel is all about, sharing information. And if you've got any insight into this type of fishing and you want to share it with other people, please put it down there so we can all enjoy and benefit from your experience in fishing for Australian salmon as well. All right, let's get back to the fishing. Yep, yep, I'm on again. Come on! Come on! <laughs> All right. Feels like another good fish. Oh. oh, it's dogging me in the wave. All right, I got it surfing in. God, that seems to be the key. If you can get him surfing in on a wave, you got half a chance. But when they're using the surf to their advantage, geez, they're hard to bring in. There he is. Woo! Oh, that's a good fish, too. It's another good fish. Look at that. Oh, another good fish. with the jiggle lure in his mouth. It's the second one in probably 10 minutes. Another really good fish. Whoa, there's that surf that could be so dangerous. That could have been a lot worse than what it was there. I was not paying attention. I could have been thrown right up on those rocks. 
I left my pliers up the beach and I need them to get the uh, hook out of the fish's mouth, so... No. Watch your camera. Okay, sorry. Alright, we're gonna give him a release. <laughs> So that's it from Lox Wells. What an absolutely beautiful beach, but a place that can be very, very dangerous. So just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of the surf. There were times where I wasn't making good decisions, and at one point I thought I had it under control. I knew where the waves were. Next thing you know, I was chest deep in water, I had rocks behind me, and I had nowhere to go. And I was very lucky to escape without getting sucked out into the ocean or bashed onto the rocks. So just be smarter than I am. Tight lines, happy fishing.